the, the title of the course, Praxis, is usually one of those confusing terms because it's not that common, but what it really speaks to is, is the melding of, of different things, of theory and practice, of society and industry, of technology, of social issues, of political issues. It's a, it's a very different approach to engineering education. It's something that's a little different than their other courses. It's a struggle, but there's a lot of benefit to it. And I think it's really only seen after the fact, where they do the showcase and all of a sudden they're like, wow, this was real. And although it may not have felt that before, the showcase crystallizes that feeling. Uh, so just was talking to somebody about the solution to bike lanes on, uh, on Bloor Street. It's sort of an interesting sort of outside perspective, if you will, on people being given a, uh, I guess at first they write the RFP, then they respond to the RFP, and uh, it's a, it's, they create some interesting solutions. We only accept RFPs from the students. We give a very general statement, get out there, improve the usability, sustainability, or accessibility of the city, and the students bring it in. We don't provide any direction if we can at all help it, although to be fair, we kind of nudge on occasion, but the real goal here is for the students to do the legwork and to really engage with the challenges that interest them. We look for quality in terms of writing, research, uh, documentation. Um, that's kind of a first pass, uh, but we also look at the nature of the problem. Um, what sort of appeal it has for the city, uh, what sort of appeal it might have for people coming to showcase, uh, and also probably most importantly, how realistic would it be for a set of three engineering science students in their first year to be able to solve the problem uh, or produce uh, a solution to the problem in six weeks. Well, there was a lot of uh, prioritizing. Um, in, like in terms of the requirements we had, we had to decide what was most important and for that we looked at documents like uh, Toronto has an official plan, so we looked at what the City of Toronto prioritizes and we decided that it's safe to prioritize in the same fashion. A lot of this is our issues that we're dealing with on a regular basis through the subject of engineering report. So it's kind of interesting for me to get another perspective into it and, uh, and that all feeds in. So absolutely, I, mean, I know when um, TTC were here last year, our engineering folk came from uh, you know, our director of engineering and uh, you know, he found it actually interesting and so sort of get your mind going. I have spoken with Ben Marins, who is the manager of grants and special funds at the Toronto Atmospheric Fund. He basically deals with all things environmental. Uh, regarding the city of Toronto. And uh, we have actually spoken personally, and he said that he might be willing to integrate parts of RF, our RFP into the city's own. So potentially, within the next maybe 10 or 20 years, we could actually see this showing up in the city of Toronto, possibly even based around our design, which is pretty exciting. I think that it is a viable process, and I think that it's actually fairly, one of the points was that it's cheap to implement. You can go, or you can model, you can simulate, and you can turn that around in a couple of weeks, actually. If you have somebody who knows what they're doing, you have the computing power. And so you can really figure out if it's feasible before you do it, which is really the core of what we're trying to get at. Uh, but really it's about the students getting out there and, and doing a little bit of that self-teaching. Um, a lot of the, the software that the students use, whether they're doing solid modeling or simulation, they've had to, to learn that themselves. We do try to support them as best we can. The upper year end size are really great. There's a real community within engineering science that, that can help and uh, enlighten students on how to use the tools. But by and large, we, uh, we say get out there, do the best you can, make it work as best you can, and we'll support you as best we can. Uh, we were very inspired by pedestrian malls from around the world. Uh, the Copenhagen Mall, Strodet, is one that particularly inspired us. And um, Copenhagen has a similar climate to Toronto, so that encouraged us also to believe that this kind of thing can exist in the winter as well. Um, Montreal and Ottawa are other pedestrian friendly cities which we look to for inspiration. A huge factor in our decision was actually a professor here at the University of Toronto Civil Engineering Division and he actually recommended to look into the Sahara system. And once we looked into it, we kind of, kind of made our decision for us because it fits so well and we were able to adapt it with our ideas and it seemed to work. They are better connected than we are, so whenever we ask them any things, they usually could direct us to someone else. So by starting off by asking just one person, we eventually got all these other people we didn't expect to have answers from. You know, I think it's something that they should be interested in. I think it's the right thing you want to work with your future engineers, um, you know, planners, all of those. And at the same time, it's, uh, it gives you an opportunity to uh, you know, have a little bit of fun, be creative, and I think that's a good thing. 
one of the one of the goals of the course is to get them to um, engage on a technical level, but then to start to see the complexities on a social, a political, uh, and a municipal level, so that they're not only dealing with technical solutions or issues, but dealing with all of the things that go around the implementation of those solutions. I think as engineers, we have a responsibility to address issues that we see in the community, um, especially when we they, they are pressing and of a nature that harms other people, right? So like, this is clearly an issue that can be addressed and something that we can do to make a difference, and I think it's our responsibility to do so when we can.